Hi everyone, my name is Sarah Kirkham and I'm a registered nutritional therapist. I work in clinical practice here in Cornwall and my job is to help people adjust their diet so that they feel better. So I see people with a range of different health issues um, and I also help people to lose weight, gain lean tissue um, and I see people for sports performance as well. So it's a really diverse job. I also work for Cornwall College and I lecture in nutrition and human physiology, human chemistry there and I'm one of the Beach Rangers team. So as part of our Be Kind to Yourself project, uh, I've put together an energy balls recipe today and I hope you're going to make energy balls along with me. Um, so the ingredients that I've chosen are all there for their effect on the brain and the nervous system and on the mood. So you might have heard the saying, you are what you eat, which is entirely true. Um, because our cells in the human body, every cell is made up of uh, the foods that you've consumed. Every substance that you make in the human body is formed from the substances in the food that you've eaten. So it's absolutely true. Uh, it's also true that some foods are brain foods and that is true of each of the three ingredients that I've chosen today. Another example of a brain food perhaps more well known for its connections to the brain is fish um, because it contains long chain fatty acids that are used in the function and the structure of the brain. Uh, however, there's no fish in the recipe today, you might be glad to hear, um, but there is chocolate. So if you like chocolate, which might be whilst, uh, why you're, you're, you're planning to make these energy balls, um, then you'll already be aware of its, um, its effect on the human body when you eat it. So it certainly does lift the mood uh, and have an effect on the nervous system. So this is because chocolate contains... A substance called theobromine and theobromine is an alkaloid um, which acts like caffeine in the body. So other alkaloid substances are, other examples would be morphine, um, cocaine, nicotine uh, and caffeine itself as well. So you can start to see the association between all these different substances, these different alkaloids that they all have quite profound effects in the body. Um, but the amount of alkaloid in chocolate is really quite small. So chocolate is only a very mild stimulant to us. Uh, the dark chocolate does have more theobromine in it than milk chocolate or certainly white chocolate. Uh, so dark chocolate would have maybe a little bit more effect um, on the, the mood than milk chocolate actually and it's dark chocolate that I've chosen today but predominantly that is because of its other benefits so it's got lots of other benefits um, it's really quite nutritious actually so there's no reason why you can't include a little bit of chocolate in a healthy diet okay so um, we're going to start to make the energy balls now so I hope you have all your ingredients to hand I'm just going to adjust the screen so that you can see my hands and watch what I'm doing so I'm just going to make enough uh, I'm going to use enough ingredients for about half a dozen energy balls today Obviously you can start and stop the video so that you can catch up or if you want to make more than half a dozen energy balls obviously you can stop the video whilst you're chopping up more ingredients. So as we go along I will show you in my hand roughly how much of each ingredient I'm using for half a dozen energy balls in case you haven't got any scales at home. Um, but I'll also try and give you the weights of everything that I'm using as well. But it's a real simple recipe um, and basically just throw everything together. If it doesn't stick together, we add more dates. That's pretty much it. So we're going to start off with some walnuts. And um, I'm just going to grab a handful, which is essentially... About 
about 40 grams. So if you're weighing everything out, you'll need around 40 grams of walnuts. And all we need to do is chop them up. So if you have a blender or a Nutribullet or something like that, you can obviously just put these straight into the blender. But I decided it was going to be a little bit too noisy for me to do that. But they are really easy just to chop into small amounts, small pieces. Obviously, you can choose how big you want the pieces to be, but you don't want them too big because they won't stick together in the energy balls then. So you could, in theory, use any type of nut if you prefer other types of nuts instead because they do have similar nutrient contents. Um, although note that peanuts actually aren't a nut. Peanuts belong to the legume family, so they are quite different. But you certainly will find a lot of recipes using peanuts or peanut butter in the recipe, so you could use those if you wish. And if you haven't got so much of a sweet tooth, if you prefer more savoury tasting things, then you could choose to buy some salted nuts, which you might have already done that. It certainly does enhance the flavour of the energy ball recipe. Um, however, I've chosen walnuts for a specific reason. Because of all the nuts, walnuts have the best ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids. So the fatty acids that you find in fish really are useful for brain function and there aren't many vegetarian or vegan options with the same types of fatty acid. But the two foods where you do find a rich source of omega-3 fats, one is walnuts and the other is linseed. So walnuts really are an excellent brain food. In fact, we don't know if it's just a coincidence that walnuts actually do look like the cerebrum of the brain, if you can see that. So if you've ever seen a picture of a human brain and you have the two halves, the two halves of the brain, the cerebrum, um, the walnut actually sort of looks like the brain. So. Maybe that's why it's so good for the brain and mood and mental function. So walnuts are bursting with fibre, with vitamins, with, with minerals and have a really high antioxidant content. So they've actually got a higher antioxidant activity than any other common nut. Uh, all nuts have a high fat content. So the flavour in these energy balls is going to come from the fats as long uh, as well as the other ingredients as well. And of course the, the nuts in the recipe also bring the crunch to the energy balls as well. So that's our walnuts. So about 40 grams or um, round about a good handful of walnuts I've chopped up there. So our next ingredient is chocolate. So I just bought some uh, choc chips, so these are already in little nibs, uh, but you could also just have a bar of chocolate and just grate it. And just again, that's just a handful that I've chosen to chop up there. Weight wise, that is around 20 grams. So you could just have a bar of dark chocolate and grate it into small pieces or chop it into small pieces or you might have bought the small nibs which is even better because then you probably don't even need to chop those up or you might just need to chop them into two. So again the size doesn't matter too much but if they're too big they're just not going to stick together when you roll the energy balls up. And 
again, if you've got some sort of a blender or a Nutribullet, then you'll be able to just put all these ingredients straight into there, whiz it round, and your mix will be ready to go. So you can make this even more easy than this simple demonstration that I'm giving you. So I said before that I'd chosen dark chocolate for a number of reasons. So one of the main reasons is that it's a lot lower in sugar than milk chocolate and certainly lower in sugar than white chocolate. Um, so white chocolate really doesn't have much of the, the cocoa bean itself in it. It's really um, just a high content of sugar and milk. So ideally dark chocolate is the one that you want if you're trying to look after your health. So it contains lots of different nutrients. Um, the nutrients in dark chocolate I'm particularly interested in are the antioxidants called polyphenols. And the polyphenols have lots of health benefits for heart health and for mental function. Who would have thought that eating chocolate could actually be good for your brain? Well, it can be, but only in moderate amounts and only, I would say, as a nutritionist, if it's dark chocolate. Because milk chocolate and white chocolate contain too much sugar to be good for us. But dark chocolate does have some antioxidant benefits. It also contains uh, a good amount of certain minerals. So iron, for instance, magnesium zinc, copper, manganese, so lots of the minerals which are essential for health. And some studies have actually identified a positive association between dark chocolate consumption and cognitive performance and brain health. So that's some research studies actually showing that dark chocolate can be beneficial because of its antioxidant and nutrient content beneficial to brain health. It is more bitter to taste, um, although as nutritionists think that's sort of a benefit because it stops you from eating too much of it. So whereas you can get through quite a lot of milk chocolate, dark chocolate sort of helps you to put the brakes on how much you eat gives you a bit more control than you might have with milk chocolate. So I'm just chopping these up into quite small pieces and then we are just going to put them in the bowl with our walnuts. So the only utensils that you need here obviously is just a chopping board, a knife and a bowl unless you are choosing to blend everything in the blender. So those ingredients have just gone into a bowl and now we come on to our third ingredient which is the dates. So most dates that you buy will have a stone inside so unless they say that they are pitted um, they're going to have stone inside but they come out really easily, so that isn't a problem. So I'm going to use, I think I'll try with four dates to begin with and see if that is enough to stick everything together. So again, as with the other ingredients, we just chop everything up into small pieces, which is really simple to do. You can see how sticky these are. So the dates are here really to stick everything together and the benefit of that is that it means we don't have to include in this recipe any 
sugar or syrup. Of course the dates have a lot of sugar, natural sugar in them already. So this isn't a sugar-free recipe certainly. But we don't have to include any syrup or honey or treacle or anything like that. We're just using the sticky fruit to stick the whole recipe together. And dates also have lots of benefits as well. So they contain lots of fibre and they're also a good source of potassium, magnesium, copper, manganese, iron uh, and vitamin B6 as well. So they do bring, as long, along with their stickiness and sugar content, they do bring something to the party here. Lots of different nutrients and lots of fibre. They've actually been linked with um, significantly better memory and learning ability in some studies because they contain lots of antioxidants as well. So the antioxidants that dates contain are called flavonoids uh, and also there's some carotenoids and phenolic acids, so different types of antioxidants and it's these that reduce inflammation in the brain and can help with memory and learning ability. So again that's um, around about a handful of dates chopped up and that's going into the bowl. So I hope you've washed your hands because you really are going to get your hands right in this to mix everything up. So there's so many antioxidants in this recipe actually, maybe I should have called it the, the antioxidant energy ball recipe. So all we are doing now is really just mixing everything together. So you're just trying to get the dates stuck to all of the chocolate and all of the nuts. If it doesn't look like everything's going to stick together then that just means that you need a little bit more of the dates so you can chop a couple more of those up. So we just mix everything together until it's combined and again if you've whizzed this together in a blender or a Nutribullet then you probably already have got pretty much a paste. The only problem with doing this in a blender is that you might not get as many crunchy bits so it might if you leave it in too long it will just give you a paste. So the taste will be there but maybe not quite so much of a crunch so it depends how you like your energy balls. If you like eating nuts and you like the crunch of the nut then you probably want slightly bigger pieces. So once you've mixed everything together you just take around about a teaspoonful or a dessert spoonful depends how big you like your energy balls and just compress it together and once it's really compressed you can sort of roll it or press it into a ball. Just like that. So I think I'll probably get maybe about half a dozen out of this. Let's see. So if you find that your mixture isn't sticking together, then as I said, the easiest, quickest thing is just to um, chop up a couple more dates. And then you'll find that everything sticks together. Alternatively, you could add a little bit of any sort of nut butter or maybe a little bit of coconut oil if you've got some of that at home and that will help to stick everything together. And once you've made these energy balls, of course you could, if you wanted to, roll them in other ingredients to give them a sort of coating. So you could roll them in some chia seeds, some linseeds, 
uh, coconut flakes or maybe some chopped walnuts so if you've got some chopped walnuts left over then you can just roll them into that and get some crunch on the outside so if you've used a blender then you will definitely have a smoother energy ball so you might want to roll them in something to give a bit of crunch on the outside you could also add in some dried fruits and maybe something like some cranberries would work really well with this and of course they bring added nutrition to the energy ball recipe so cranberries are going to bring more polyphenols and more fiber so that's all good sesame seeds would be another good option and they are packed with calcium as well so sesame seeds are a good option for good healthy bones Okay, so just make one more of these. And so I'm, I am pretty much going to get half a dozen energy balls out of the amounts that I used. So that was pretty much a handful, a good handful of each of the three ingredients. And once these are made, they're ready to eat so you don't need to freeze them or even refrigerate them um, they'll keep in the fridge for up to about two weeks although I doubt they will stay around for that long <laughs> so there you have it there's our energy balls so real simple to make tasty to eat very nutritious um, and the process of making them i'll come back to you here <laughs> process of making them i hope you've enjoyed it um, cooking generally is therapeutic anyway um, so i hope that you found the process of making them very therapeutic um, and eating them is good for the body as well so there's our be kind to yourself energy balls. Enjoy. Thank you for watching.